Okay, hi. Uh, good to see you again. We are going to do kind of an interesting topic today, and we're doing it because there seems to be people that are on the web searching for it. It's uh, uh, perforopathy. It is perforopathy. It's, it's fibromyalgia and small fiber perforopathy. And this is kind of a new development in, 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 in both of those fields. Uh, a new understanding uh, are, is evolving relative to fibromyalgia, which we might even discuss as a term that probably needs to be abandoned. You heard it here first. But, uh, but indeed, um, it, it's, it's something that people are starting to look for on the, on the web. We, Dr. Gates and I, uh, run a largely chronic pain practice of which fibromyalgia and peripheralty are a significant percentage of the people that we uh, treat. And I would say for years we have noticed that um, fibromyalgia patients will come in um, your particular aspect of the exam doing the nervous system will, will more often, almost more often than not, uh, produce the understanding that they have peripheral neuropathy also. I don't know, we see it as much the opposite way around where somebody would come in with peripheral neuropathy and have fibromyalgia. We see it, but nowhere near as often as that. But we see it both ways. Now, um, Dr. Gates, one of Dr. Gates's hobbies is to spend two or three hours a night researching everything in the world about what we do, and I'm very grateful for that because I don't do that. And uh, and so there's a lot of new, there's some new data that's coming out there. It's very interesting. That's correlating with what we're seeing, and uh, and I, and so we thought it'd be interesting if Dr. Gates shared some of his findings with you, and uh, and maybe even why I just stated that. Uh, fibromyalgia. I, I, we've said for a long time fibromyalgia is a dumb term. It means you have pain in your muscle fibers, and it really isn't even that. No, no, no. And and so so it's an even dumber term <laughs> based on based on the fact that it doesn't tell you anything about what's wrong with you, but based on the fact that it isn't really even pain in your muscle fibers. So, but I will turn this over to Dr. Gates at the moment. He can share you some of the exciting new stuff that has been helping us to understand better what we're doing and, and has helped us with our to go forward with maybe advancing our treatment in this area. Yeah, and so as you alluded to, the first understanding of fibromyalgia was that this person or you out there watching or a loved one has severe pain throughout the entire body. And we thought that the pain was in the muscles because that's where it felt as though the pain was. And then as time went on and studies evolved, we learned that there really was nothing wrong with the muscles. And instead, there were problems with the spinal cord and the brain and how the body was interpreting this pain. And we really locked on to, I said we, the scientific community, locked on to stress right. as a major provocative factor for triggering the spinal cord to not be able to shut off pain as well as inflammation throughout the system. And we even quoted articles from earlier this year really setting the, the association between Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an immune condition against the thyroid, and fibromyalgia. However, the Journal of Pain, I can swear, I thought it was June of last year, but I do know there was also an article in November of last year where they really started talking about small fiber peripheral neuropathy and fibromyalgia. So right. first of all, we need to explain peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy is where the peripheral nerves start to dysfunction. We have a central nervous system and nerves that go out to our arms, our hands, and our feet. And peripheral neuropathy commonly affects or diabetics commonly have peripheral neuropathy, and it accounts for 50% of the peripheral neuropathy cases in our country. Now, with that being said, neuropathy basically involves the nerves out here in your arms, your hands, or your legs dying or dysfunctioning. And usually there's an underlying metabolic cause, like diabetes, like an autoimmune problem that causes those nerves to die. There are many different types of nerves. Some are big, some are little. The little ones are called small fiber neuropathies, and the little ones encode pain. That's what you need to get, pain. And so this Journal of Pain in November of 2013 demonstrated that upwards of 41% of fibromyalgia patients have small fiber neuropathy. This was and then the point being, patients come to our office, I have fibromyalgia. Other patients come to their office, we have peripheral neuropathy. Right. And, and it, it, a lot of people don't know that they have kind of both. And again, it usually will come out in the exam, and it was kind of something that's been interesting. So that's why this is kind of an exciting breakthrough for us 
to understand better what's going exactly because we were seeing it clinically before yeah. it came out in these studies. Out studies. And in essence, in the study, they went and they took a little piece of skin out and they can look at it under a microscope how many small fiber nerves right. are there, and they see fewer of them in fibro patients versus uh, control patients. So this is a really novel finding, as Dr. Rutherford said, because it's changing our understanding on fibromyalgia. And now we do have what's termed a peripheral mechanism for fibromyalgia. We always knew, or we've known for the last 20 years, there's no inflammation in the muscles. We've known that the problem was largely in the spinal cord and the brain. And now we're starting to see, well, there can be a problem in the small fiber nerves out here, in the extremities most commonly. So just know that is the skinny on fibromyalgia and small fiber neuropathy. Uh, we've gotten feedback that many of you are on fibromyalgia message boards, and this has been talked about, and we wanted to do this little expose so that you can get a better understanding of really the nuances of what's happening. And if you have any more questions, you can go to powerhealthtalk.com. We have more broadcasts there. We have full hour-long presentations on fibro. And was there anything else? And for for And for for And for for And now they cry. It's probably going to come together that they're, that they're basically the same thing. The same thing. Yeah. And they just are manifesting in, for some reason in some people, and, and I have both, by the way. <laughs> yes, I do. have had both, okay? Uh, it's part of how I got into this. And, and, and for some people, it's going to manifest in uh, the fibromyalgia, the sensitivity, the super sensitivity. Some people, it's going to manifest in, in you having um, pain, numbness, tingling, burning in your feet. And, uh, and some people, it's going to manifest in both. So I, I think it's going to, where it's going, it sounds like it's the same thing. I even, you know, when we do this, frankly, it's like, it's a little bit formal, but, but this is kind of how we talk uh, offhand. And I was going to say, um, it, it, frankly, we're, we're getting close to where it's almost the same treatment in a sense that, right. that you might even do the same thing for, for the peripheral patients relative to the, to the fibro patients relative to the stimulations mm -hmm. that we do in the feet that we do for the peripheral neuropathy patients, it's kind of logical to do it if a person has foot pain, and it might be kind of counterintuitive to do electrical stimulations to the feet for somebody who comes in with this sensitivity all over the place, but I do, it, it does sound like it's going to the same into the same place, which, exactly. which simplifies things for us mm -hmm. a lot. So, Okay, I so, think that's it. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you for Got watching. My two cents in. And again, if you have any other questions, go to powerhealthtalk.com. Okay.